Every Thursday, my mother would put us to bed early because on Thursdays was payday. And my dad, as a low paid worker, got paid in cash and he would always go to the pub spending money that they couldn't afford to spend and he'd go to the pub drinking and come home drunk and my mother knowing that when he came home drunk it often ended in arguing aggression and violence put us all to bed early on thursdays on this particular thursday night i remember we were all in bed my younger sisters were fast asleep and my dad never touched the girls that i know of my dad was never violent that i know of to my younger sisters but only to us the four boys of which I was the youngest of the four boys. This particular Thursday night, my dad came home drunk. It must have been about 10, 11 at night. And within, within minutes, the violence began. And we always knew the violence was about to begin because the dog would sense it. And the dog would begin to yelp and cry and bark. And then the violence would kick in. The dog was like a canary in the coal mine, sensing this violence and the dog would be so terrified that it would just react and then it would go for it and start trying to bite my father and then he kicked the dog and that's what happened this particular Thursday night and we four boys were upstairs terrified hearing this commotion my mum was screaming and we could hear the violence and stuff flying around and the shouting and the swearing and my brothers decided to go down and help my mother because it sounded on this night like he was killing her. And then he just went quiet. And I didn't know what had happened, but my older brother Terry came upstairs and told me that he punched my dad and knocked him out and that they were leaving the house. I didn't know what that meant, but within seconds it seemed that my three brothers and mother left the house and left me upstairs in bed. And I was there in the house on my own, my sister's fast asleep and they were safe because he never touched them and I was just so terrified that when my dad woke up, he would come up and beat me up because that's what he normally did. He would take it out on the boys and I was the only one left in the house. It would be about midnight after at this time, my mom and three brothers had just gone. And I remember being in my bed terrified, shaking in fear. Um, and uh, not knowing what to do. I crept around the bedroom, it seemed forever to not make any noise, to get dressed, to put clothes on. And I decided that I would escape from the house, but I couldn't go downstairs. So I climbed out of the bedroom window. This would be probably one in the morning. I climbed out the bedroom window and I gripped onto the drain pipe next to my window and, and slid down the drain pipe. I remember scarring all my legs on the way down. And I just took off into the night. And my plan was to um, go to two houses on the council estate where we lived, where I thought my mom and brothers could possibly have gone for refuge. And I thought if I see lights on in those homes, maybe they're there and I'll go and knock at the door and I'll, I'll be safe. I went to both these houses, no lights on, no one there. I didn't know what to do. I remember distinctly as I've been thinking about this story in recent weeks as I've rewritten this book I'm not my father I remember standing outside those two homes at the dead of night and it was November December it was freezing and being afraid to knock at the door knowing that my family may or may not be there in case they weren't there and I still have to tell them why I'm there. I remember feeling what I know now was shame, fear and shame that um, I would expose what was going on in my home and the fear that my dad would kill me and the shame I felt I would bring to my family by 
telling these relatives why I was at their door at one in the morning because my father was beating my mother and I wanted to somehow protect his reputation. I don't know what that was. Anyway, I didn't know what to do. I'm just on the streets, I'm freezing. Didn't know where my family were, couldn't go back home. I wandered the streets for a good couple of hours. And then I was so cold, I found an old burnt out car. I had no windows in, um, all the upholstery burnt off the seats and I just curled up on the springs that were left on the back seat of the car. And I curled up in a ball and I spent the night there. I didn't, I didn't know what else to do. I was so, so cold and felt so afraid. And the next morning when daylight came and I heard activity outside, I kind of guessed it was school time and I went straight to school from that burnt out car. Um, no one asked me anything, of course, because I just showed up. It wasn't school uniform in those days. I just showed up in my regular clothes thinking I'd just go home at the end of the day. So I went straight to school from that burnt out car. I remember being um, so worried that someone would know something and somebody would make me talk about it. And I would have to expose my family. And I got through the day and I went home and my mum was there, my brothers were back, my dad was at work and it kind of just all carried on. My mother couldn't believe that I had left the home. She'd been out of her mind all day, worrying about me, she said, not knowing what had happened is what I just told you now. And I tell you this because that story, and I have very few about my childhood, that story has helped me connect some of the dots between the trauma of that evening um, and the sense of um, abandonment, I think I felt. I think the sense of abandonment I felt as an eight-year-old boy alone in that way. And I think it's explained to me why in my adult life I have not trusted people and had this independence and this survival mode and this to hell with you towards people that I just knew would let me down, abandon me, not be there for me. I never believed people when they said to me they had my back or they um, would stand up for me or they'd come through for me. I never believed them. And I think that tendency I have, even in my midlife, is rooted in that kid that night, that eight-year-old me shinning down that drain pipe, terrified for my life. And it's it deeply cementing into me, I suppose, imprinting on my mind, my emotions that night, that I am not safe, I am not seen, I'm not important, I don't matter, and you're on your own. And I think recovering that memory and sitting with it, I've never sat with it. I've never sat with it till this last few weeks and months as I've rewritten the book has helped me begin to unpack some of my narratives through my life, some of my default modes through my life that I don't think have often served me well. I don't know. Um, what benefit this story is to you guys, apart from me saying to you, I think we all have things in our childhood, hopefully not as traumatic as mine, that if we're willing to go there and sit with it, I think have the potential to explain something to us about our lives, our relationships, how we've lived, our health, our mental health, and so on, that may be a key 
to our recovery and are moving on and flourishing in life better than we could if we didn't do the work that I'm talking to you about that I've been doing in recent months around this area. I hope that story was not, not too traumatic for you all and somehow um, can be of assistance to you guys in your journey as you continue to say, I am not my father and here's why.